let's talk about cream and liquid blushes. I'm currently obsessed with cream and liquid blushes, so I thought it would be fun to sit down and talk to you guys about some of my favorite cream and liquid blush formulas. So let's get into it. These aren't in any particular order. I'm not ranking these blushes. I have the top 20, and I was trying to narrow it down to my top 10 favorite, but I couldn't. And then I was trying to do 15, and then I was like, no, I need to include these. There are some repeat formulas in here, but some of these are just so beautiful. I would definitely notice if they were gone from my collection. There are some that I, I don't care as much about. They're just not as good. And a lot of these formulas have been talked about before. I see them talked about by a lot of different creators, but some of these in here, I don't see a lot of people talking about. So I wanted to highlight them a little bit. I will be showing you guys arm swatches and cheek swatches on these. Like I said, they're not in any particular order. They're not ranked or anything. These are just the top 20 cream and liquid blushes, according to me. So let's hop into to some of my drugstore favorites first. So the first one that I have is probably one of the least expensive in my collection. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick. This one is in the shade Floral Majority. I just think this is a really easy blush. I usually just draw this straight onto my cheeks and it's emollient enough that I can just blend it out with a brush. It never gets patchy. It's really pigmented. It's quite long lasting. It performs like some of my high end blushes. It's just such a beautiful product. I think it's a cream to powder formula. It just looks beautiful on the cheeks. It lasts a really good amount of time throughout the day. It never gives me any hassle, not on application, on patchiness. It's just an all around pretty stand up product with a really good formula. So huge fan of this. This is under $5, you can't go wrong. The next one that I have is from Believe Beauty that you can get at the Dollar General. This is the Color Me Cream Blush in the shade Doll Face. This is an extremely pigmented product. It's also super emollient. You almost have to be careful with this when you put it on. I like to tap my brush into it and kind of dab it on the back of my hand to diffuse some of the color and then go into my cheeks because it can be really, really punchy. But unlike the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick, this has a little bit of sheen to it. So it's a really pigmented, but also very luminous blush. It's just a really good product. This does retail for $5.75, so it's under six bucks. It's a really long lasting formula, even though it has a lot of luminosity. It never gets patchy on my cheeks. It's just really opaque. This is another drugstore, more affordable blush that just outperforms some of my high-end blushes in my collection. So this one is a tremendous one. The next one that I wanna talk about is fairly new to me, but it's a formula that I really enjoy and I really don't hear anybody talking about this and it may be a formula thing. I don't know, I just happen to kind of love this formula. This is the Fluffy Blush from Pacifica. I have mine in the shade Sunset. I really do like a fluffy mousse formula blush. This one is thick and very pigmented and very opaque. It's another one where I have to like dab it on the back of my hand to diffuse some of the product and then go into my cheek because it is very, very pigmented, but it's very long lasting. It never looks patchy. It goes on top of powder very easily. Every foundation, it doesn't disturb any of it. It's just a really good product that's fairly affordable. I really don't hear a lot of people talking about this blush, so I did wanna highlight in today's video. This is the only like mousse type blush I have in this video, but I really do love this kind of formula. It's just very bouncy and smooth and feels very good on the skin. So this is a tremendous one. The next one that I have is one of the Cheek Kiss blushes from Milani. This one is in the shade Nude Kiss. This one reminds me of the one from Believe Beauty, but it's just not as pigmented. It has that same sheen it's very beautiful, goes on top of powder really well, never disturbs my foundation. I can apply this product with a brush, with a sponge. It's just a very easy to use, easy going formula. I like that it can be sheared out if you want to, but it's also pigmented enough that you can build this product up. It really gives a nice like healthy glow to the cheeks. So just all around a really standout product in my opinion. A lot of people talk about these. I think it comes in a really good shade range. Melody is kind of like mid-range price point for drugstore, but I think if you like kind of luminous blush that can be sheared out for a more natural look, but also built up for something more vibrant and heavy if you wanted to, these Cheek Kiss blushes from Milani are your go-to. The next ones that I wanna talk about are on the higher end, but they are still available like at the drugstore and Target. These are the cream cheek and lip colors from Honest Beauty. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this formula. I think these are amazing. I have two shades. The more pinky shade is in rose pink. The more orangey shade is 
in coral peach. I bought rose pink first on a whim before I'd heard anybody talking about this formula. And then the first time I tried it, I was really surprised that I hadn't heard anybody talk about this formula because it is just so good. It's very opaque, it's buildable. It has a very slight sheen to it, but it's almost like a satin finish blush. If you pat this product in, it looks more satin, kind of like a cream to powder formula. But also if you went in with a lighter hand and didn't diffuse it out, you can get a luminous finish. It's also a product that you can go in really heavy. It's very buildable. It's very opaque, a lot of pigment. You can also share this out if you want to. And it's one of the longest lasting like drugstore blushes that I have in my collection. I noticed that this blush lasts me all day long. It's definitely on the stickier side. So that could be the reason that it's a very long lasting formula. Again, nobody really talks about these. These are awesome but they are on the higher price point for drugstore blushes. But those are huge recommendations for me. Let's move on into the stick blushes that I wanna go over. There are repeat formulas in here, but I couldn't leave any of them out. There is something about every one of these that I love, that I gravitate towards when I'm looking at my stick blushes, depending upon whether I'm wanting like a matte finish or a dewy finish, like these are the ones I think of and that I reach for the most. So the first one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Blush. I have mine in the shade Latte. This is an extremely opaque formula. Not to mention this shade in Latte is fantastic. It is a cream to powder finish. It never gives me patchiness issues. This is a stick blush that I can draw straight onto my face and just blend out because it's emollient enough. I have time to work with it, but I also love the way that it looks when you pick it up with a brush, diffuse it onto the cheeks. It looks very airbrushing. It's just an uncomplicated formula that 10 out of 10, it always looks great on my skin. Honestly, of all the stick blushes that I have, this is one of the best formulated stick blushes in my collection. It's just a really sophisticated, really well-performing stick blush. Basically any way that you wanted to get this on your face and diffuse it out, it does it. It's great for beginners. It's just that good of a formula. The next one that I want to talk about is Drugstore, but it is a stick product and it's very different than the other ones. This is the Pixi On The Glow blush. They call this the Tinted Moisturizer Stick, and I have mine in the shade Juicy. It's an interesting product. Looks like an old school stick of deodorant. I actually take this product because of the way that it's designed and draw it straight onto my cheeks and then I blend it in with a brush. I think this one is the most glowy blush that I have in today's roundup. This is actually a pretty pigmented product, but like once you start blending it in, it starts to sheer out. It gives you a really healthy looking sheen. So if you like that, this is a really good product to sheer out on kind of makeup, no makeup days. But this is also a product that has enough pigment in it that you can build it up for a more impactful look. This is a fairly new to me product. I got this recently because I'm really into trying every stick blush or every cream and liquid blush I can basically get my hands on. Every time I go to a store, I feel like I need to pick another one up. So I picked this one up. I had been eyeing it for a while, but it did look like a formula that maybe I wouldn't get along with because I don't usually go for super luminous blushes. I'm more of like a matte finish cream to powder formula, but this is one that I can just get along with. It's not overly sticky. It lasts a good amount of time. It's just a really good, versatile, luminous stick blush. The next one that I have is a stick blush from M Cosmetics. This is called the So Soft Blush Stick. I have mine in the shade Venetian Rose. This one reminds me a lot of the ABH. It's very opaque. You can build this product up. It's not necessarily one that you can sheer out. So it is one that I like to kind of pick up on a brush because it is so pigmented, kind of diffuse it on the back of my hand and then go into my cheeks. But if you wanted something more pigmented, this one will give it to you. The way that this one is different than the ABH is that it's a more emollient formula. The ABH is definitely on the drier side. So it's a little bit easier to blend in. You do have to be a little bit careful with the M Cosmetics stick blush because it is so pigmented and so creamy but it is such an easy application it's such a long lasting formula she has such beautiful shades in her line and when i'm looking for something just really pigmented easy formula this is the one i think of reaching for here is another one that i do not hear anybody talking about this is one of the heat stroke blushes from make beauty i have mine in the shade inflamed this is a more red like corally shade and it looks very intimidating but because this product is on the luminous side it shears out a little bit 
bit more, but you also can punch this up. It's a nice thick formula. It's right in between probably the M Cosmetics and the ABH in terms of emollients. It's not super pigmented. It's meant for a more glowy cheek, a more luminous finish. It is not as dewy as the Pixi on the Glow Blush, but it's also not as matte as the ABH one. I'd say like it's right in between with a teeny bit of luminosity. And when I'm looking for something that's just kind of in the middle, these heat struck blushes are perfect for that. They're pretty long lasting. They're very vibrant, a lot of fun Fun, vibrant shades from Make Beauty. Another product that doesn't matter if I pick it up on a brush or go straight into my cheek, it blends out perfectly without ever looking patchy. Wish more people talked about these heat stroke blushes from Make. I think they're really good. The next one that I have is the Nude Sticks Nudes Matte. This one is in the shade In the Nude. This one is very similar to the ABH one. Aside from the ABH, it's probably the best cream to powder formula stick blush that I have in my collection. It's a little bit of a stiffer formula, but it's very pigmented. You can also share this out. Again, this is one of those easy stick formulas that you could draw onto your cheeks and then blend in without it looking patchy, but you can also pick it up with a brush or a sponge, tap it on the back of your hand, and then blend it into your cheeks, and it still looks perfect without looking patchy. Very pigmented, definitely on the drier side, so it's a really long-lasting stick formula. If you like that really matte finish blush, which sometimes I'm really into just a matte finish blush. So if you do like that, these are really good. I would say though, this is not my favorite cream to powder formula, but it's it's really good. It's probably the most matte stick formula that I have. The next one actually really shocked me. This is from REM Beauty. This is one of her cheek and lip sticks. I have mine in the shade Audition. This is so pigmented. It's so opaque. When I first used this and drew it straight onto my cheeks, I was like, oh my gosh, but it is so beautiful. It's more emollient than the ABH, but it's less emollient, I think, than the M Cosmetics. It's right in between. It's a cream to powder finish. It's so opaque, but it blends out perfectly. It never lifts, it never patches. It dries down to a matte finish. I use this product by drawing it straight onto my cheeks and blending it out. It breaks down perfectly, but it's such a super long lasting formula. Best thing that I tried from REM Beauty, instantly became obsessed with this product. I think these, these blush sticks are fantastic. They're so, so good. Let's move on into the liquid blushes. There aren't that many. <laughs> I don't think I'm as big of a fan of liquid blushes as I am cream blushes. So I'm pretty picky when I was going through my collection. I have quite a bit of liquid blushes. There are definitely some really popular liquid blushes on the market, but they're not some of my favorite when I'm thinking of what my favorite cream and liquid blushes are. So the ones that I have are fairly new to me, but they're already becoming some of my absolute favorite and for very different reasons. There are only two formulas here just because I really narrowed down the like liquid blushes that I really, really like and wanted to recommend to you guys in this video. Like I said, both of these are new to me. So the first ones up are a new launch from Juvia's Place. These are their liquid blushes. I have two shades. I have more pinky shade in peach rose and the more orange shade in marigold. These are the most pigmented product I've ever used, ever. I have to put the doe foot applicator onto the back of my hand, pick it up with a brush or a damp sponge, diffuse it out, and then go into my cheeks. It's a really staining formula. It's super long lasting. I actually think that they have a slight dewy finish to them if you don't diffuse them out too much. But if you continue to diffuse them out, you can get them to dry down on your cheeks. They're just a really, really long lasting, very pigmented product. So you have to like that. And there aren't many of those those that I have in my collection, for example, the Juvia's Place and the Rare Beauty ones, I prefer these ones actually over the Rare Beauty ones because I honestly think that they're just an easier formula to work with. I never get patchiness issues with these where sometimes with the Rare Beauty ones I do. So if you've ever experienced that but you love the Rare Beauty ones and you like their pigmentation, then I would definitely say to check these out. I love the shade range in the Juvia's Place ones. I think they come in 16 different shades. They're a little bit less expensive. The ones from Rare Beauty are $23, whereas these retail for $18. Really long lasting, very staining formula. I think they have the capability to kind of be a hybrid product where if you just go in with a little bit, you can get them to look luminous, but you can also mattify them if you really continue to just pat them in. So I think these are a great, great formula. They are becoming ones that I really like to reach for in liquid format. All right, the next one is a very new to me product, but I have been using it constantly since I got it. This is the BYO Oil Blush from Euphoria. This is the most unique blush in my collection. It's definitely oil based. It doesn't pack a whole bunch of pigment. It's more like a staining oil on the cheeks. 
I just dotted on my cheeks a couple of times. I blend it out with a brush and I love the pigmentation. You can get a lighter look with it, but you can also build this up. Surprisingly, it has enough pigment that you can continue kind of layering it on top of itself without it starting to get patchy and it will get more pigmented on your cheeks. So you can go in lighter, heavier if you want to, but the shine on it is so beautiful. It's not overpowering it's not overly sticky i think it's the perfect luminous blush that has the capability to be built up i don't find a lot of overly luminous or like oil type products can be layered up very well whereas this one can most unique liquid blush or just cream and liquid blush product in my collection, but I wanted to mention this because this is again, another product that I don't hear anybody talking about that I think if you like a luminous finish, you would like this one. Now we are moving on into the more like compact blushes. I think this is probably my preferred style of cream blush because I find them very easy to use. I use a lot of these products with just straight brushes. I use a lot of these products with sponges. I use a lot of these products with any tool that's really just handy because I think that they're a really easy to manipulate, very easy to work with formula. So I do have multiple shades in the next two, just because I liked the formula so much that I ended up going back and getting another in each. So the first ones that I wanna talk about in this compact form that are on the more high-end side are from Melt Cosmetics. These are the cream blush lights. I have one shade that is more pinky in the shade Pink Sand, and the one that's more orangey is in the shade Honey Thief. I discovered these last year, but I think they came out the year before. They're just such an emollient formula that is just super pigmented. I think they're probably some of my favorite in this style format. They are the most creamy cream blushes that I have that are compact like this. I think they have a tiny bit of sheen to them, so they're a little bit of a hybrid product, that, but they're more on like the matte side, almost a cream to powder finish, which is so unusual because they're so emollient, they're so creamy, but packs such good pigmentation. This is another product that I think is really buildable, but I do think it's on the more pigmented side right away. So if you wanna go in with a lighter hand, I would say take your brush, or take your sponge and diffuse it out. Even though they're really, really emollient, they're not a slippy formula. They're very, very easy to work with. When you swatch them, they kind of feel like they might be a little bit finicky, but once you actually pick them up with a brush or a sponge, they're extremely easy to work with. If I were only able to keep one cream blush in my collection for the rest of my life, I think it would be these. Even though I might not call these out as being my absolute favorite formula in the whole world, these are ones that I would miss if they weren't in my collection. I think that if I had to make a choice and narrow it down to one cream compact blush product that you could keep, these would be it. The next ones that I wanna talk about are the Cheek Freak Blush Balms from About Face. I have two shades here, they are very similar, but the one that's more peachy is called Quickie. The one that is more orange is called Raunchy. These are ones that I saw get mixed reviews on the Ulta website, and when I tried them, I didn't understand that. I immediately fell in love with this product. I think that they're a very buildable formula. They're the kind that you can sheer out or build up if you want to. I never get patchiness issues with them. Because this is a balm product and a thinner formula, you can get a more everyday kind of blush with a little bit of luminosity out of these products. But if you wanted to pack on the pigment, you could also do that. I just think these are really tremendous. I think the slight luminosity on these just really gets me. I like the pigmentation. I think it's a really easy to work with formula. It doesn't matter what brush or sponge I use to apply it. It applies on top of powder. It never gets patchy. It never lifts my foundation. I like a little bit of luminosity. So if you like something that's buildable and has a little bit of luminosity, these are great from About Face. The next one that I have reminds me a lot of the cream blush lights from Melt, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. This is the Convertible Color Dual Lip and Cheek Cream from Stila. This is also on the more emollient side. So this is a product that when I pick it up on a sponge or a brush, I actually diffuse it out onto the back of my hand. It's even more pigmented, in my opinion, than the one from Melt. And even though it's such an emollient formula, very, very creamy, very pigmented, I still think it dries down to a matte finish. I'd like to hear more people talking about this particular product because I just think it's so good. It's super easy to blend in. It sits on top of powder, sits on top of foundation, never gets patchy. Just a really tremendous product. It reminds me a lot of the Melt Cream Blush Lights because it's an extremely, extremely emollient formula, but because it's emollient without being super slippy, it's a really easy product to work with. So 
how awesome blush from Stila. The next one that I have is from Laura Mercier. This is one of her cream cheek colors, and this one is in the shade Praline. Laura Mercier has a pretty sophisticated formula. I call it sophisticated because it's on the drier side. It's definitely not a slippy product, but it's still easy to pick up. It likes the warmth of your finger. It likes a brush. It likes a sponge. But the way that it applies to your cheeks looks very airbrushed because it's on the drier side. This is a cream to powder formula. It never gets patchy. It sits on top of powder. It never lifts any of my foundation, but it always looks fantastic. It reminds me a lot of the ABH stick blush, but in a compact. Tremendous, tremendous formula from Laura Mercier. The thing that I would say that I dislike about this product the most is that it is in such a small compact. It's such a little bit of product and it's on the higher price point. So those are the two downsides to this. Otherwise, the formula is fantastic. The next one that I have reminds me a lot of the Stila and the Cream Blush Lights from Melt. This is the Beach Please Cream Blush from Tower 28. I have mine in the shade Magic Hour. It's a very emollient formula, also very pigmented, very opaque, also a non-finicky formula, even though it's very emollient, that doesn't slip off of your face, never lifts your foundation, sits on top of powder very easily. The biggest difference between this one, the Melt, and the Stila is that this product has luminosity. It's definitely more luminous than both of those. They do call this the luminous tinted balm. So it is similar to the about face in that way that it does have a little bit of luminosity. The difference I think between the about face and this one is that this one is definitely more opaque, has more pigmentation than the about face one. I think that you have to diffuse this color out because it's a much more like whipped texture, definitely a little bit thicker than the about face one, which is harder pressed. So you get more luminosity than you get pigment and color on your first application. So this is a nice in-between alternative between like the Melt Cream Blush Lights and the Stila and the About Face one. Tremendous product. A lot of people talk about these, but I'm re-loving this. I've had this in my collection for a while and I'm coming back to it again and just finding that it is just such a good product. The next two that I have are the final two and they're very similar in the way that they're very, very pigmented products, but they're very different in their formulas. So the first one that I have is the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Balm. I think this name is very interesting because if you look at the texture, it looks like it's almost a powder when you first open this product, but it is cream. It's just a cream to powder formula. It is not a balm in the sense that I find it has any luminosity. I find that it is completely matte. This is the most pigmented compact cream blush. I can take one swatch of this on my finger and literally drag it all the way down my arm. It is just so much pigment. I have to be careful with this product. I do use an overly fluffy brush to apply it. And even then I take the fluffy brush and I diffuse it onto the back of my hand before going into my cheeks. It looks super airbrushing because it is that cream to powder formula. I never find it get patchy on me. I think this is a beautiful product. I even think it's worth the price point because this is probably the most expensive product that I am going over and showing you today. I don't regret getting this. I would get this in different shades because I just think it is so beautiful. This one is in the shade 30. The last product that I have is a new product from Danessa Myricks. This is the Yummy Skin Color Balm. This one is in the shade Rosé and Brunch. I think this product is also a little bit different than all the other ones that I went over because it's definitely on the emollient side, but it's extremely pigmented. And I think that it has a matte finish. I don't think it has any luminosity to it, so it always looks very airbrushing on my cheeks. So I don't think it reminds me of the Tower 28 in that way because that one has some luminosity. Even though it's extremely emollient, it's still just not as emollient as both the Stila and the Melt. So it's a nice balance between all of the products that I went over, but it's not like a almost matte formula that the Armani one is. This is a tremendous product. I love it for a punchy day where I want a really long lasting blush. I can easily apply this with really whatever applicator, brush, whatever I want. Easily, it doesn't give me any hassle, never looks patchy. I think this is great. I think it's a more affordable product from Danessa Myricks. And it's just a tremendous product in my opinion. I don't regret getting this. I liked it so much. This will probably go into my top products that I tried in launches for 2023. And I even thought about going back and getting other shades. And I would, I think, if my collection wasn't so big, but I need to get use out of the one shade that I do have. That is everything, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I brought up some maybe new ones or told you a little bit more about why some of these ones are my favorite. I'd love to hear in the comments whether or not you like some of these, if you thought about trying some of these formulas, if you disagree with any of these, or just recommendations on some of your favorite formulas that I didn't mention today. I would love to hear from you. If you are not currently subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and come back and hang out with us. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I am out of here, you guys, and I will catch you all in my next video.